Family Maps, too. Mats and Gordon. Mats and Gordon as kids, drawing together. Comics, mainly. Also, Monsters, Ancient Rome, and, as seen in the 1960s, Futuristic Technology. Mats and Gordon, this in the afternoon before Yak and Marion start their post-dinner screaming matches, happy. And in the afternoon, as they draw, the world seeming to agree. Green leaves on the trees, hot sunbeams in the air, everything radiating vitality and juice and energy. Then, Gordon in a bed, a hospital bed, Gordon skinny as a rake, a cancer patient, Gordon's liver already a hard, failed clot in his gut, Gordon dying. This is a year and a half earlier. Mats has flown to Canada again. On this occasion, one of those crazy, super short overseas trips that Koreans are used to, but that North Americans think are wasteful. Universal cultural agreement on the necessity of this one, though. During a teleconference with Montreal General's doctors, one says, If you want to see your brother one more time, I suggest you come in the next week. So, Matt's arriving in Montreal, Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport. Matt's trying to figure out yet another frigging complicated vending machine that's used in travel. Even the machines in Japan are easier to figure out than this one in Montreal. Matt's on a bus, then in a taxi. Matt's arriving at the hotel on Sherbrooke Street where his dad is. Matt's and Yak hugging. One year and a half, and Yak still physically fairly substantial. Then, the next morning, another taxi, and Max, Mats and Yak arriving at Montreal General, going to the 15th or 18th or 200th floor. The hospital feels like a building housing a city. And seeing first his mom, Marion, close to the hospital room door, and then, a second later, emaciated Gordon. Matt's isn't shocked, exactly. The only reason he's here is because the doctors have told him Gordon is terminal. When Matt's had seen Gordon a year ago, his ascites was so bad he looked like he'd swallowed an inflatable mattress. Now the ascites bloat is gone. Medical teams have drained the fluid. But in place of bloat is the even more pernicious feature of emaciation. Liver failure and malnutrition have cleared Gordon's skin, blotchy when he was still on the booze, and receded his hairline. He looks like a born intellectual. His high forehead, a family trait, is more pronounced than ever. But this pulling back, this making taut, has, for some reason, affected his mouth. His teeth look weird. They have the feral look of a creature whose food supply is very uneven. Apart from everything else, the limbs as thin as sticks, the plastic tubes in his arms, the medical prognoses, you can tell this is a human being in mortally bad shape. He resembles a victim, someone imprisoned and deliberately starved and now too weak to crawl back to health. But he's friendly. He smiles as soon as he sees Matt's. Hey, he says in a tone that would be cheerful if it weren't hideous in its underlying weakness.